Okay, should be on. Uh, okay. Are we, is the red light on? It's on. Red okay. Light? The red light. Yeah. 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 It is recording. <laughs> it's okay. All right. So, um, so I'm going to talk on this video a little bit about spiritual discernment and doing spiritual work, and also about this idea that everything uh, everything is a is a perception from the ego. <clears throat> Well, I mean, everything is a perception from the ego until one is enlightened or one has reached the ultimate level of truth, in which case one is in the absolute truth. But until that time, uh, the world that is perceived is a projection of the ego, that that's true. I think uh, what's great is to recognize with perception uh, and, and re recognizing, realizing and being in the truth I think that the work of Dr. Hawkins is really, really, uh, really good. So he talks about the different levels of ego inflation and the types of projected world that is experienced. So if you have a really inflated ego, like I had a really inflated ego, I was working in the stock market, workerism, I was, uh, I was a food addict, so I was really repressing my feelings uh, all the time, constantly, never having a chance to experience, thinking 100 miles an hour, uh, working at 100 miles an hour, eating at 100 miles an hour, so just the constant thing. So all those repressed feelings become like these big vat cylinders, tanks of repressed fear, anger, shame and guilt, and uh, the thoughts go 100 miles. So that is like a huge block to being the absolute truth. Um, so when the ego is that inflated, the perception or the projections are extremely dark. Are dark. So if, using A Course in Miracles language, the experiencing of fear and separation would be tremendous through the projections of fear and separation. So you, with the body, there'd be extreme body identification, really experiencing the body and all the aches and pains around the body. There'd be strong thought identification as well. And the projections, because it's like, that's like such a big filter to the light, you know, the light of consciousness that one will be projecting, like, uh, say you're vibrating at the level of fear, then you'll be seeing, like, oh, this is, a, this is a fearful world. You know, if there's airplanes going up, they're probably going to crash. Uh, the economy's going to crash. You know, if I walk out the streets, you know, there's probably someone who's going to mug me. Um, you know, so you just project the projections when your the ego is that inflated, become very, very negative. And, you know, very, very fear-based or very shame-based. As you start to do the spiritual work of just feeling the feelings or doing 12-step work or doing the Course in Miracles and forgiving uh, and feeling your feelings, then you start to go up in your levels of consciousness. So the, the projections that are, that are witnessed through the ego um, become uh, more lighter. So you might get to a state, instead of being in, well, next level up from fear, you know, you might be going, after you've released a lot of the fear, you might go into anger. You see, and the projections get coloured through the filters of anger and the thoughts that filter through. At each level of consciousness, um, you know, at the ultimate level, there is only one. You know, there is no such thing as separation. But as you're going up, as you're dissolving these layers of the ego, what's happening is you're tuning in to a, a collective field. I mean, Hawkins would call it attractive fields. But in fear, you know, like, or I was in radio addiction, which is... Um, so you get all of these, uh, you get these sort of universal thoughts that all addicts have, which is there's never enough of whatever you're trying to get. You know, there's not enough donuts. You have these donuts, and then another thought pops in from the collective field of consciousness, the collective egos within the field of, uh, of addiction and desire. It's like, oh, we need more. You know, where, how can I get more donuts? Or how can I get more food? Or how can I get more alcohol? Or how can I get more drugs? Or whatever it is. So as you go up to anger, then you get these, which is going up a level, so the energy is getting higher, but you get the projections through that filter of the ego. So, you know, uh, uh, you know, the, you know, it's an angry place, you know, I need to, like, take revenge on everyone, I need to take revenge on the politicians, revenge on whatever, you know, it's like I'm angry at my parents, I'm angry at my finances, so that becomes, as you do more spiritual work, the projections become more benign, because there's less of that intense negativity and the thoughts are going at, at, a, at a lower rate so you're tuning into higher vibrations but the projections become more mild you know you start to get as you start to get into the spiritual fields 
you start to see, well, you know, that person's a bit sick, but I understand them, I have compassion for them, I understand where they're coming from, you know, I can let it go, I can allow people to be who they are, or as you go to higher levels, projections become even more benign, or start to be influenced by spirit. So the projections become more like, well, the, world's, the world is perfect as it is, you know, un the unfolding of karma through the collective consciousness is unfolding just the perfect way for everyone to undo whatever they need to undo and everyone to learn their lessons and everything is perfect and doesn't require my intervention. So, the, the, so now you start to get these interventions from the spiritual fields and, and at the ultimate level, uh, classically called enlightenment, uh, I would say you, you often go through the death of the ego, which is a, an extreme terror, as, as you suddenly realize that to go through this last fear, this last terror, will be to dissolve the actual basis of the ego, which, be, which is this um, identification with thoughts and body. And, the, and the, one of the core belief systems is that my thinking and my ego is the source of my life. So to let that go at the very last level when this terror, as you've done all the refined work, comes up, you know, the ego goes, well, don't go through this one because without, your, without, without me, you won't be, you won't be here to, to live. And so you then take on board the, um, <clears throat> you take on board all the teachers of enlightenment who say it's safe to go through that last terror uh, to get to the fields of enlightenment. And what does that mean? Uh, basically, uh, there's no longer identification as being a separate local entity. You know, the, 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 se the separation, the experiencing of separation through thoughts and body dissipates and, and consciousness becomes non-local. Uh, so the experiencing of that. And as you start to do spiritual work, you start to get these spiritual states of timelessness, uh, you know, t locationless, timeless, eternal bliss states where there's no sense of a separated, um, a sense of uh, separated self ceases to exist. Uh, that starts to happen more as you do the spiritual work. Now in terms of, so that's in terms of the projections, you know, ego projections and how they sort of get coloured as you're doing the spiritual work. So everything's a projection until you're enlightened and then you're, you're in the truth, the eternal truth, which is the, the one truth. Even though there are levels of enlightenment, we won't go into that right now. Uh, and, um, okay, so on the journey up, this thing of discernment, you know, spiritual discernment, and uh, so actually at each level, as you do more spiritual work, uh, what happens, one of the things to realize if you're doing spiritual work, especially with Course of Miracles students, uh, because it, it, get, it has lessons like trust your brother, uh, and uh, you know, everyone's sinless, you know, you can see Christ in everyone, see, you know, God's in everyone, God is in everyone I see, you know, God is the love in which I forgive everyone. So what do you, you know, and for me the thing with that is, well at each level, of, for me, you know, I'd say that you have to, um, What's good with that is to have, you know, to go to groups to get the wisdom of the groups or to have spiritual teachers or coaches or mentors to, who've gone ahead of you to give you sort of practical tips like what do you do if, um, you know, th does forgiveness mean like if you know someone's just stolen your wallet uh, and does it mean you just forgive them and then leave your wallet on, on the table and go to the toilet the next time you see them? because you've forgiven them for doing that. Does that mean, is that spirituality? You know, so the spiritual, what is, what, what, what's that? And then you go, well, you know, those who've gone before you will say at different levels of consciousness, you, uh, there's a certain level where people can be what's called spiritually naive. You know, just because you forgive them and you see that, you see, oh, the Christ is in you, I can see the Christ in you, I can, I can see that you're a, you're a child of God. Uh, but, it, but it's also to, to realize the nature of this universe. So. Some people still are not in integrity. It doesn't mean you don't love them and forgive them, but uh, also it would be a form of um, it would be a form of enabling them to just keep leaving your wallet there for them to steal it. Or you know, if I was a if I was a food addict, a donut addict, or a biscuit addict, you know, if someone just left a plate of biscuits and they know I'm a, I'm a food addict, then they're just putting me in a place of temptation. I won't be able to stop myself from just eating all those biscuits again. You see. So, so, it's, it, so you start to develop spiritual discernment. So it doesn't, you still forgive people and you still have love, but it's like you're able to, um, 
you're able to discern what's the right thing to do. You know, like one of the great things, I've, you know, that was I heard from Hawkins is, you know, you know, one's actions at each level of consciousness is understood as different, but one's actions are for the, um, would be in the interest of the highest good. So at each level of consciousness, you'd see what is in the interest of the highest good. You know, so, like, um, if there's uh, if there's an axe murderer that you've seen uh, you've seen picked up the newspaper and you've seen there's an axe murderer on, on the front cover and you see the axe murderer, is it in the interest of the highest good that you go up and give them a hug? You know, is that going to be the interest of the while they're holding an axe? Bun? While they're holding the axe, <laughs> you know, you see you read read the newspaper and you see be you know keep wide distance, call police immediately, uh, do not do not approach. And you see them and you think, well, you know, there's a child of God, uh, he's my holy brother, so I'll just go and I forgive him. So I'm just going to give him some brotherly love or sisterly love. It, so again, but then, you know, I think one of the core things is like, you know, is it in the interest of the highest good that this guy is mentally unstable and that I go and give him a hug? So probably it's not. Probably in the interest of the highest good of all concerned, it might be to call the police. And that's the, that would be the act of love in that situation. You still love the person, you still forgive them, but you're using spiritual discernment. Otherwise, if you don't have that, you can go into a field of spiritual naivety, where you think, well, that's a child of God. But in this world, I think, you know, the Course in Miracles would be right in a heavenly field. Uh, but in this world where you're mixing up people at different, to their different levels of consciousness, so you have axe murderers, you have saints, all on the same street, so, you know, until the spiritual discernment is, um, is there, it's to, you know, it's maybe to get guidance or if you haven't yet evolved your own spiritual. But, you know, I mean, from <clears throat> a lot of these fields, a lot of the spiritual teachings we talk about eventually getting spiritual intuition as to what to do in sp uh, specific situations. Mm. And uh, generally speaking, what I do, like, let's say I've got, you know, I'm going to a spiritual teacher and they say something that's really unsettling, you know, or if they make, say, sexist jokes or, or, or whatever it is, or it's something... Often, uh, it is a problem. I mean, uh, you can speak to others or if you have mentors, but sometimes things don't sit right. You have an intuition that something's not right with a particular person. So then, you know, you can speak to others, you can forgive, um, do a lot of processing. What I often do is... Um, I'll, I have spiritual mentors, or I'll do a lot of things. I mean, I, initially, I'll use something as unsettling to do the spiritual work initially. And I'll you often try not to, this is often a 12-step thing, not to, not to act from a place of uh, fear or anger, but to process things or to get advice as to how to do it. But often, if something gets triggered in me, sometimes it's like my own stuff. And if I resolve that, then I'll see the situation differently. And sometimes it is because the teacher is not integrous, or the people, the person is not, you know, is no good. And actually you're getting a kind of a spiritual, uh, spiritual, spiritual resonance which is coming from, let's say it's coming from spirit rather than ego. It's like something's wrong with this person, something's wrong with this spiritual teacher, something doesn't seem right. And actually that's a spiritual guidance, so you start to get that spiritualism. But sometimes it might be just your ego's, your ego might, it might just, it might not be that, and sometimes it can be the ego. So if you forgive, and you get, and the Holy Spirit comes in for another interpretation of what that event was. Then you see, oh no, it was just an innocent thing. You know, you can let it go, and it's more my stuff that's being triggered. So these these start to these things start to go. And I, th from my own experience, uh, you know, I think really experience does count. As you go up in levels of consciousness, you start to get more and more experience. As you get to high levels of spiritual con consciousness, um, and you do things like Course in Miracles or study enlightened teachers. You, you become more and more capable of seeing when something's not right, you know, because your capacity to spiritually discern, you know, if, if a teacher says, like, you know, you should kill your enemies, you kind of, kind of go, well, that, I'm pretty sure that's not right. I've got enough spiritual involvement to know that that's probably, <laughs> probably a bad teacher, you know. But sometimes, some, for new students, they might be, you know, um, do. I mean, I mean, I did do a video recently on, on, on fallen teachers and fallen gurus. Uh, that's another thing to watch out for. You know, sometimes spiritual teachers can be very, very high, and then they can sometimes uh, fall from grace mm -hmm. because of the temptations. 
So if one day it's like, uh, you know, uh, it's like love your neighbour and the next day it's like let's have a sex orgy, <laughs> then it's like, you know, okay, he seemed quite good, but, but it's like something doesn't seem right. Um, anyway, anyone who's gone into the spiritual teachers will probably know what, what, what I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. We don't do that in this group. Um, <laughs> <laughs> just a few, a few, a few, a few, a few wor worried looks there. <laughs> <That's okay. laughs> and um, okay, so I think that's the thing with discernment. So if you if you're worried, I mean. <clears throat> Yeah, it's not to be spiritually naive, and sometimes when you do these teachings, like you're forgiving all the time, you know, if you've got like guidance or you've got a group to sort of run things by, you know, like should I, for should I forgive the axe murderer and, and invite him home because he's homeless or something, then the group wisdom will sort of like let you know, it is to forgive him and he's a child of God, but that's probably not the right thing to do in that particular situation, you know. Uh, I think family is a slightly different thing to spiritual teachers. Uh, spiritual teachers is one thing. I think family depends. You know, sometimes if a family member is um, is below integrity, you know, is really extremely ill, uh, it might be to avoid them. Uh, but sometimes, you know, I found with my uh, with my mother, who was, you know. Uh, who I had a really awful relationship with by doing the spiritual work and committing to transcending my mother by, you know, and I, we've gone into quite a few videos on how to apply the tools we've done here, feeling the feelings, going to the observer of things that hooked me in uh, and witnessing those things which hooked me in and wanting to be in a place where there's nothing they can do or say that can unhook me from my truth. And actually having that thing, it took about five years, so it wasn't like that quick. But, you know, I found that by, by having that thing, you know, the relationship absolutely transformed. And I sometimes think with family members, there is, not always, but sometimes there's a great spiritual opportunity, even if you have a very oh. difficult relationship with, because it's such a karmic thing to have a family member, that not necessarily always, I would say, just cut your family off and never speak to them again. Sometimes there can be opportunity to really do the spiritual work with family members. I would say, that, I'd say different things with strangers and spiritual teachers, where sometimes I think if they're not, it's quite good to cut them off. But family members can be an interesting case where I think there can be a lot of growth. Uh, I mean, often people with family members, you know, may <coughs> have the thing of, well, it's difficult, so I'll never speak to them again, uh, kind, of, kind of view. But I think sometimes there's a, there's a greater potential with healing relationships with family than, than with other, in other situations.